Dear students, welcome to the world of physics. As you embark on this journey, I urge you to open your minds to the unknown, to the mysteries that challenge our understanding of the universe. Beyond the familiar realms of classical and quantum mechanics lie the enigmatic territories of dark matter, dark energy, and the unsolved mysteries that span both the cosmic and quantum scales. Our universe is vast and full of wonders waiting to be discovered. It is a tapestry woven with threads of known laws and hidden truths. The quest for knowledge is an ever-evolving journey, one that demands curiosity, resilience, and an unyielding spirit of inquiry. As your guide through this exploration, I have had the privilege of making significant strides in proving the Riemann hypothesis, a breakthrough that holds profound implications for physics. This proof paves the way for what I term super-special relativity, or mathematical duality, a framework that promises to revolutionize our understanding of the physical world. But the journey does not end here. The torch is now passed to you, the next generation of thinkers and explorers. It is your responsibility to reconcile these mathematical insights with the physical phenomena we observe. The path ahead will be challenging, filled with obstacles and moments of doubt. However, it is a path worth treading, for those who dare to venture will be remembered as the architects of a new era in physics. Your efforts will bridge the gaps between the macroscopic and microscopic worlds, revealing a unified understanding that has eluded humanity for centuries. Embrace this challenge with courage and determination. Your contributions will shape the future, not only of physics but of science as a whole. Remember, every great discovery starts with a question, a curiosity, a spark of inspiration. Let that spark guide you, and let your passion for knowledge drive you forward. The universe is vast, and its secrets are within your reach. Together, let us embark on this journey of discovery and innovation. The physics of the 21st century awaits your brilliance and perseverance. Before I sign off, here's a message appealing to students. As you embark on your journey through the fascinating realms of physics and beyond, I encourage you to explore my work titled Numbers Are Three-Dimensional by Sergei Ghosh. This exploration promises to unveil unique perspectives and insights into the dimensions of numbers that may reshape your understanding of mathematics and its applications. Additionally, I invite you to visit my YouTube channel, where you can find an audio-video guide accompanying this revision book. Your feedback and comments on the channel are invaluable in shaping future discussions and explorations. Happy discovering and learning. With great respect and anticipation. Sergey Ghosh. Let's move to next chapter. Kinematics and dynamics. Let's talk about introduction. Kinematics and dynamics are foundational concepts in physics that describe motion and the forces that cause it. Kinematics focuses on describing motion without considering its causes while dynamics deals with the forces and torques that produce motion. This chapter will cover the essential principles, equations, and examples to provide a thorough understanding of these topics. Let's talk about kinematics. Basic concepts will be discussed now. Kinematics involves quantities such as displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Displacement is the change in position of an object. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Equations of motion will be discussed now. The equations of motion describe the relationship between these quantities. There are three primary equations to remember, often referred to as the kinematic equations. These equations allow us to predict future motion based on initial conditions and constant acceleration. 1. The first equation relates final velocity to initial velocity and acceleration over time. 2. The second equation relates displacement to initial velocity, time, and acceleration. 3. The third equation relates final velocity to initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. For the detailed forms of these equations, please refer to the textbook or accompanying materials. Projectile motion will be discussed now. Projectile motion occurs when an object is launched into the air and is subject to gravity. 
It can be analyzed by separating the motion into horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal motion has constant velocity, while the vertical motion has constant acceleration due to gravity. Circular motion will be discussed now. Circular motion involves an object moving along a circular path. Key quantities include angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. When an object moves in a circle at a constant speed, it experiences centripetal acceleration directed towards the center of the circle. Let's talk about dynamics. Newton's laws of motion will be discussed now. Newton's laws of motion are fundamental to dynamics. 1. Newton's first law, also known as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion at constant velocity unless acted upon by a net external force. 2. Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it, and inversely proportional to its mass. This can be expressed as the equation F equals ma, where F is the net force, m is the mass, and a is the acceleration. 3. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that forces always occur in pairs. Free body diagrams will be discussed now. Free body diagrams are a tool used to visualize the forces acting on an object. By drawing the object and all the forces acting on it, we can apply Newton's laws to solve for unknown quantities like acceleration or tension. Friction will be discussed now. Friction is a force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces in contact. There are two main types, static friction, which prevents motion from starting, and kinetic friction, which acts during motion. The force of friction depends on the nature of the surfaces and the normal force pressing them together. Work and energy will be discussed now. Work is done when a force causes displacement. The amount of work done is the product of the force, displacement, and the cosine of the angle between them. Energy is the ability to do work. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and potential energy is the stored energy of position. The work energy theorem states that the work done on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy. Conservation of energy will be discussed now. The principle of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. In a closed system, the total energy remains constant. Momentum will be discussed now. Momentum is the product of an object's mass and its velocity. It is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. The principle of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of a closed system remains constant if no external forces act on it. Collisions will be discussed now. Collisions can be elastic or inelastic. In an elastic collision, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. In an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved but some kinetic energy is transformed into other forms of energy, like heat or sound. Let's talk about conclusion. Kinematics and dynamics form the core of classical mechanics, describing how objects move and interact through forces. Understanding these principles is crucial for further study in physics and engineering, providing a foundation for analyzing more complex systems and phenomena. Let's move to next chapter 2, Work, Energy. And power let's talk about introduction work, energy, and power are interrelated concepts that play a crucial role in physics. They help us understand how forces cause motion and how energy is transferred and transformed in different systems. This chapter will cover the definitions, principles, and applications of work, energy, and power. Let's talk about work. Definition of work will be discussed now. Work is done when a force causes an object to move in the direction of the force. The amount of work done depends on the magnitude of the force, the distance over which it is applied, and the angle between the force and the direction of motion. Work is a scalar quantity and is measured in joules. Calculating work will be discussed now. To calculate work, you need to know the force applied, the displacement of the object and the angle between the force and the direction of displacement. 
The formula for work can be found in the accompanying materials. Work done by a variable force will be discussed now. When the force applied to an object changes over the distance, calculating work requires integrating the force over the path of the object. This is common in scenarios involving springs or non-uniform fields. Let's talk about energy. Kinetic energy will be discussed now. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. An object has kinetic energy if it is moving. The amount of kinetic energy depends on the object's mass and the square of its velocity. The formula for kinetic energy is available in the textbook. Potential energy will be discussed now. Potential energy is the stored energy of an object due to its position or configuration. The two most common types are gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. Gravitational potential energy depends on the object's mass, the height above a reference point, and the acceleration due to gravity. Conservation of mechanical energy will be discussed now. The principle of conservation of mechanical energy states that the total mechanical energy, kinetic plus potential, in a closed system remains constant if only conservative forces are acting. This principle allows us to solve problems involving motion and energy transfer without directly calculating the work done by individual forces. Non-conservative forces will be discussed now. Non-conservative forces, like friction, cause energy to be converted into forms that are not mechanical, such as heat. When non-conservative forces are present, the total mechanical energy is not conserved, but the total energy of the system still is. Let's talk about power. Definition of power will be discussed now. Power is the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred. It measures how quickly energy is used or transferred from one form to another. Power is measured in watts, where one watt is equal to one joule per second. Calculating power will be discussed now. Power can be calculated by dividing the work done by the time it takes to do that work. Alternatively, power can be found by multiplying the force applied to an object by its velocity if the force and motion are in the same direction. Examples of power will be discussed now. Examples of power in everyday life include the power ratings of electrical appliances, the horsepower of engines, and the metabolic power output of the human body during physical activities. Let's talk about applications. Machines and efficiency will be discussed now. Machines, from simple levers to complex engines, are designed to make work easier by increasing the force applied or changing the direction of the force. The efficiency of a machine is the ratio of the useful work output to the total work input, usually expressed as a percentage. Energy and technology will be discussed now. The concepts of work, energy, and power are fundamental in designing and analyzing various technologies, from electrical circuits and motors to renewable energy systems and transportation. Biomechanics will be discussed now. Understanding work, energy, and power is also essential in biomechanics, where these principles help explain how muscles perform work, how energy is stored and used by the body, and how athletes optimize their performance. Let's talk about conclusion. Work, energy, and power are central to understanding the interactions and transformations in physical systems. They provide a framework for analyzing mechanical processes, designing efficient machines, and developing technologies that harness and utilize energy effectively. Let's move to next chapter, Thermodynamics and Statistical Mechanics. Let's talk about introduction. Thermodynamics and statistical mechanics are branches of physics that deal with the behavior of large groups of particles. Thermodynamics focuses on macroscopic properties and the laws governing energy transformations, while statistical mechanics connects these macroscopic properties to microscopic behavior. This chapter covers the key principles, laws, and concepts of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Let's talk about classical thermodynamics. Laws of thermodynamics will be discussed now. Thermodynamics is built on four fundamental laws. 1. Zeroth law of thermodynamics will be discussed now. If two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This law establishes the concept of temperature. 2. 
first law of thermodynamics will be discussed now. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. This is also known as the principle of energy conservation. 3. Second law of thermodynamics will be discussed now. The total entropy of an isolated system always increases over time. Entropy can be thought of as a measure of disorder or randomness in a system. 4. Third law of thermodynamics will be discussed now. As the temperature of a system approaches absolute zero, the entropy approaches a minimum value. This implies that it is impossible to reach absolute zero in a finite number of steps. Thermodynamic processes will be discussed now. Thermodynamic processes describe how a system changes from one state to another. Key processes include Isothermal process will be discussed now. Occurs at constant temperature. Adiabatic process will be discussed now. Occurs without heat exchange with the surroundings. Isobaric process will be discussed now. Occurs at constant pressure. Isochoric process will be discussed now. Occurs at constant volume. Cyclic process will be discussed now. The system returns to its initial state, and the net change in internal energy is zero. Heat engines and refrigerators will be discussed now. Heat engines will be discussed now. Convert thermal energy into mechanical work. They operate in cycles and are governed by the efficiency determined by the second law of thermodynamics. Refrigerators and heat pumps will be discussed now. Transfer heat from a colder region to a warmer one. They require work input to operate and are characterized by their coefficient of performance, COP. Let's talk about statistical mechanics. Microstates and macrostates will be discussed now. Microstate will be discussed now. A specific detailed microscopic configuration of a system. Macrostate will be discussed now. Defined by macroscopic properties like temperature, pressure, and volume, which can correspond to many possible microstates. Boltzmann distribution will be discussed now. The Boltzmann distribution describes the distribution of particles over various energy states in thermal equilibrium. It provides a link between microscopic properties and macroscopic thermodynamic quantities. Partition function will be discussed now. The partition function is a central quantity in statistical mechanics, encapsulating all possible states of a system. It allows the calculation of thermodynamic properties like internal energy, free energy, and entropy. Statistical interpretation of entropy will be discussed now. Entropy can be understood statistically as a measure of the number of possible microstates corresponding to a given macrostate. The more microstates available, the higher the entropy. Let's talk about applications. Thermodynamic cycles will be discussed now. Thermodynamic cycles, like the Carnot, Otto, and Rankine cycles, are used to model the operation of heat engines and refrigerators. These cycles help in understanding the efficiency and work output of real-world systems. Phase transitions will be discussed now. Phase transitions, such as the transition from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, involve changes in the macroscopic properties of a system. Thermodynamics and statistical mechanics provide insights into the conditions and behavior during these transitions. Blackbody radiation will be discussed now. The study of blackbody radiation involves understanding how objects emit and absorb thermal radiation. This has significant implications in fields like astrophysics and climate science. Let's talk about conclusion. Thermodynamics and statistical mechanics offer a comprehensive framework for understanding energy transformations and the behavior of systems at both macroscopic and microscopic levels. Mastery of these concepts is essential for analyzing real-world phenomena and advancing technologies in fields ranging from engineering to environmental science. Let's move to next chapter. Thermodynamics Let's talk about introduction. Thermodynamics is the branch of physics that deals with heat, work, and energy. It explores how energy is transferred and transformed in physical systems and provides fundamental principles that govern the behavior of matter in different states. This chapter covers the key concepts, laws, and applications of thermodynamics. 
Let's talk about fundamental concepts. System and surroundings will be discussed now. A thermodynamic system is a defined quantity of matter or a region in space under study. Everything outside this system is considered the surroundings. Systems can be isolated, closed, or open, depending on the exchange of energy and matter with the surroundings. State variables will be discussed now. State variables describe the condition of a thermodynamic system. These include temperature, pressure, volume, and internal energy. State variables are properties that depend only on the current state of the system, not on how it reached that state. Processes will be discussed now. Thermodynamic processes are changes that a system undergoes from one state to another. Common types include isothermal, constant temperature, adiabatic, no heat exchange, isobaric, constant pressure, and isochoric, constant volume, processes. Let's talk about laws of thermodynamics. Zeroth law will be discussed now. The Zeroth law of thermodynamics states that if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This law defines temperature and provides the basis for temperature measurement. First law will be discussed now. The first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or converted from one form to another. Mathematically, it is expressed as delta U equals QW where delta U is the change in internal energy, Q is the heat added to the system, and W is the work done by the system. Second law will be discussed now. The second law of thermodynamics introduces the concept of entropy, a measure of disorder or randomness. It states that in any spontaneous process, the total entropy of the system and its surroundings always increases. This law explains the direction of natural processes and the inefficiency of energy conversions. Third law will be discussed now. The third law of thermodynamics states that as the temperature of a system approaches absolute zero, the entropy of the system approaches a minimum value. It implies that it is impossible to reach absolute zero in a finite number of steps. Let's talk about heat and work. Heat transfer will be discussed now. Heat transfer occurs through three mechanisms. 1. Conduction will be discussed now. Transfer of heat through direct contact between particles. 2. Convection will be discussed now. Transfer of heat through the movement of fluids. 3. Radiation will be discussed now. Transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves. Work will be discussed now. Work in thermodynamics is the energy transferred by a system to its surroundings due to macroscopic forces. Work can be done by expanding or compressing gases, moving objects, or through other mechanical processes. Let's talk about thermodynamic cycles. Carnot's cycle will be discussed now. The Carnot's cycle is a theoretical ideal cycle that provides the maximum possible efficiency for a heat engine operating between two temperatures. It consists of two isothermal processes and two adiabatic processes. The Carnot efficiency is given by backslash, backslash ETA equals 1 backslash frac, T underscore C, T underscore H, backslash, where backslash, T underscore C backslash, and backslash, T underscore H backslash, are the temperatures of the cold and hot reservoirs, respectively. Refrigeration cycle will be discussed now. The refrigeration cycle is the reverse of a heat engine cycle, used to transfer heat from a low temperature region to a high temperature region. Common refrigeration cycles include the vapor compression cycle and the absorption cycle. Let's talk about applications. Heat engines will be discussed now. Heat engines convert thermal energy into mechanical work. Examples include internal combustion engines, steam turbines, and jet engines. The efficiency of heat engines is limited by the second law of thermodynamics. Refrigerators and heat pumps will be discussed now. Refrigerators and heat pumps use work to transfer heat against the natural flow. Refrigerators remove heat from a low temperature space and release it to a higher temperature space. Heat pumps operate similarly but are used to heat spaces. 
Thermal power plants will be discussed now. Thermal power plants generate electricity by converting heat energy from fossil fuels, nuclear reactions, or geothermal sources into electrical energy. They operate using thermodynamic cycles, such as the Rankine cycle. Entropy and information theory will be discussed now. The concept of entropy extends beyond thermodynamics into information theory. In this context, entropy measures the uncertainty or information content in a set of data. This connection highlights the broad applicability of thermodynamic principles. Let's talk about conclusion. Thermodynamics provides a fundamental framework for understanding energy transfer, transformation, and the behavior of matter. Its principles are essential for a wide range of applications in science, engineering, and everyday life, driving innovations in energy production, refrigeration, and many other fields. Let's move to next chapter. Electromagnetism Let's talk about introduction. Electromagnetism is the branch of physics that studies the interactions between electric charges and currents, and their effects on magnetic fields and vice versa. This chapter explores the fundamental principles phenomena, applications, and technological advancements in electromagnetism. Let's talk about electrostatics. Coulomb's law will be discussed now. Coulomb's law describes the electrostatic force between two point charges. The force depends on the magnitude of the charges and the distance between them. It states that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Electric field will be discussed now. An electric field surrounds electric charges, exerting a force on other charges within the field. The strength and direction of the electric field at a point can be determined by considering the force experienced by a positive test charge placed at that point. Gauss's law will be discussed now. Gauss's law relates the electric flux through a closed surface to the charge enclosed by that surface. It is a powerful tool for calculating electric fields in situations with high symmetry such as spherical or cylindrical charge distributions. Let's talk about magnetostatics. Magnetic field will be discussed now. Magnetic fields are produced by moving charges, or currents, and exert forces on other moving charges. Magnetic field lines form closed loops, and their direction is given by the right-hand rule. Ampere's law will be discussed now. Ampere's law relates the circulation of the magnetic field around a closed loop to the total current passing through the loop. It is useful for calculating magnetic fields in systems with symmetrical current distributions. Magnetic forces will be discussed now. Magnetic forces act on moving charges and current-carrying wires. The force on a charge moving in a magnetic field is perpendicular to both the velocity of the charge and the magnetic field. The force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field depends on the current, the length of the wire, and the angle between the wire and the magnetic field. Let's talk about electromagnetic induction. Faraday's law will be discussed now. Faraday's law states that a changing magnetic flux through a circuit induces an electromotive force, EMF, in the circuit. This phenomenon, known as electromagnetic induction, is the principle behind generators and transformers. Lenz's law will be discussed now. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF and the resulting current in a closed loop is such that it opposes the change in magnetic flux that produced it. This is a manifestation of the conservation of energy. Let's talk about Maxwell's equations. Integral form will be discussed now. Maxwell's equations are a set of four fundamental equations that describe how electric and magnetic fields are generated and altered by each other and by charges and currents. They are essential for understanding electromagnetic waves and their propagation. Differential form will be discussed now. Maxwell's equations can also be expressed in a differential form, which describes the local behavior of electric and magnetic fields. These forms are particularly useful in solving problems involving varying fields in space and time. Let's talk about applications. Electromagnetic waves will be discussed now. Electromagnetic waves are oscillations of electric and magnetic fields that propagate through space. They include a wide range of phenomena, from radio waves to gamma rays, each with unique properties and applications. 
electromagnetic devices will be discussed now. Devices such as motors, generators, antennas, and transformers rely on electromagnetic principles for their operation. These technologies are fundamental to modern life, enabling everything from electrical power generation to wireless communication. Electromagnetic spectrum will be discussed now. The electromagnetic spectrum encompasses all types of electromagnetic radiation, from long wavelength radio waves to short wavelength gamma rays. Each part of the spectrum has specific uses, such as communication, medical imaging, and astronomy. Let's talk about technological advancements. Wireless communication will be discussed now. Wireless technologies like radio, television, Mobile phones and Wi Fi depend on the transmission and reception of electromagnetic waves. Understanding these principles is key to improving and developing new communication technologies. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI will be discussed now. MRI is a medical imaging technique that uses strong magnetic fields and radio waves to generate detailed images of the body's internal structures. It is a non invasive and powerful diagnostic tool. Particle accelerators will be discussed now. Particle accelerators use electromagnetic fields to accelerate charged particles to high energies. These devices are essential for research in fundamental physics, including the study of subatomic particles and forces. Let's talk about conclusion. Electromagnetism is fundamental to understanding and harnessing the interactions between electric and magnetic fields. Its principles and applications have revolutionized technology and science, driving innovations across numerous fields. Let's move to next chapter, Electromagnetism. Let's talk about introduction. Electromagnetism is the study of electric and magnetic fields and their interactions with matter. It encompasses a wide range of phenomena, from static electric charges to dynamic electromagnetic waves. This chapter covers the fundamental principles laws, and applications of electromagnetism. Let's talk about electric fields and forces. Electric charge will be discussed now. Electric charge is a fundamental property of matter that causes it to experience a force in an electric field. There are two types of charges, positive and negative. Like charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract. Coulomb's law will be discussed now. Coulomb's law quantifies the force between two point charges. It states that the force is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This relationship can be found in the accompanying materials. Electric field will be discussed now. The electric field is a vector field that represents the force per unit charge at each point in space. It is produced by electric charges and affects other charges placed within the field. The direction of the field is the direction of the force on a positive test charge. Electric potential will be discussed now. Electric potential is the potential energy per unit charge at a point in an electric field. It provides a measure of the work done to move a charge from one point to another. Electric potential difference, or voltage, is the difference in electric potential between two points. Let's talk about magnetic fields and forces. Magnetic fields will be discussed now. Magnetic fields are produced by moving electric charges or by changing electric fields. They exert forces on other moving charges and on magnetic materials. The direction of the magnetic field is given by the direction and north pole of a compass needle points. Biosavar law and Ampere's law will be discussed now. The Biot-Savart law describes the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire. Ampere's law relates the magnetic field around a closed loop to the total current passing through the loop. These laws are fundamental to understanding magnetic fields and can be found in the accompanying materials. Lorentz force will be discussed now. The Lorentz force is the force experienced by a charged particle moving in an electric and magnetic field. It is given by the sum of the electric force and the magnetic force. The formula for the Lorentz force can be found in the accompanying materials. Magnetic materials will be discussed now. Magnetic materials are classified as diamagnetic, paramagnetic, or ferromagnetic based on their response to magnetic fields. 
ferromagnetic materials, such as iron, can be permanently magnetized, while diamagnetic and paramagnetic materials have weaker and temporary magnetic responses. Let's talk about electromagnetic induction. Faraday's law will be discussed now. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that a changing magnetic field induces an electromotive force, EMF, in a conductor. This principle is the basis for many electrical devices, such as generators and transformers. Lenz's law will be discussed now. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF and current is such that it opposes the change in magnetic flux that caused it. This law ensures the conservation of energy in electromagnetic induction processes. Inductance will be discussed now. Inductance is a property of a conductor or coil that quantifies its ability to induce an EMF due to a change in current. Self-inductance refers to a single coil, while mutual inductance describes the interaction between two coils. Let's talk about Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations are a set of four fundamental equations that describe how electric and magnetic fields are generated and altered by each other and by charges and currents. They are 1. Gauss's law for electricity will be discussed now. Relates the electric field to the distribution of electric charge. 2. Gauss's law for magnetism will be discussed now. States that there are no magnetic monopoles. The net magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero. 3. Faraday's law of induction will be discussed now. Describes how a time-varying magnetic field induces an electric field. 4. Ampere's law with Maxwell's addition will be discussed now. Relates the magnetic field to the electric current and the changing electric field. These equations are provided in the accompanying materials. Let's talk about electromagnetic waves. Nature of electromagnetic waves will be discussed now. Electromagnetic waves are oscillations of electric and magnetic fields that propagate through space at the speed of light. They do not require a medium and can travel through a vacuum. Light, radio waves, microwaves, and X-rays are examples of electromagnetic waves. Wave equation will be discussed now. The wave equation for electromagnetic waves can be derived from Maxwell's equations. It shows that electric and magnetic fields oscillate perpendicular to each other and to the direction of wave propagation. Spectrum will be discussed now. The electromagnetic spectrum encompasses all types of electromagnetic radiation, categorized by wavelength or frequency. The spectrum ranges from low-frequency radio waves to high-frequency gamma rays, with visible light in between. Let's talk about applications. Electric power generation will be discussed now. Generators convert mechanical energy into electrical energy using electromagnetic induction. Power plants Wind turbines and hydroelectric dams use this principle to produce electricity. Transformers will be discussed now. Transformers transfer electrical energy between circuits through electromagnetic induction, allowing voltage levels to be increased or decreased. They are essential for efficient power transmission and distribution. Communication technologies will be discussed now. Electromagnetic waves are used in communication technologies including radio, television, cell phones, and Wi-Fi. These technologies rely on the transmission and reception of electromagnetic signals. Medical imaging will be discussed now. Electromagnetic waves play a crucial role in medical imaging techniques such as MRI and X-rays. These methods provide detailed images of the body's internal structures for diagnostic purposes. Optical devices will be discussed now. Optical devices, such as lenses, microscopes, and lasers, manipulate light for various applications. Understanding electromagnetic principles is essential for designing and using these devices effectively. Let's talk about conclusion. Electromagnetism is a fundamental branch of physics that explains the behavior of electric and magnetic fields and their interactions with matter. Its principles are vital for understanding natural phenomena and developing technologies that impact various aspects of our daily lives. Let's move to next chapter, 
Optics Let's talk about introduction optics is the branch of physics that studies the behavior and properties of light and its interaction with matter. From understanding vision to developing advanced imaging technologies, optics plays a crucial role in science, technology, and everyday life. This chapter covers the fundamental principles, phenomena, and applications of optics. Let's talk about geometric optics. Reflection and refraction will be discussed now. Reflection will be discussed now. When light encounters a smooth surface, it bounces off in a predictable manner according to the law of reflection, where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Refraction will be discussed now. Refraction occurs when light passes from one medium to another, causing a change of direction due to differences in the speed of light in each medium. This is described by Snell's law. Lens and mirror systems will be discussed now. Lenses will be discussed now. Lenses are optical devices that refract light to form images. They can be converging, convex, or diverging, concave, and their properties are described by the thin lens equation. Mirrors will be discussed now. Mirrors reflect light to form images. Concave mirrors can produce both real and virtual images while convex mirrors form only virtual images. Optical instruments will be discussed now. Microscopes will be discussed now. Use lenses to magnify small objects by refracting light. Telescopes will be discussed now. Use lenses or mirrors to gather and focus light from distant objects. Cameras will be discussed now. Use lenses to focus light onto a photosensitive surface, film, or digital sensor to capture images. Let's talk about wave optics. Wave nature of light will be discussed now. Light exhibits wave-like behavior, characterized by properties such as wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. Interference and diffraction phenomena demonstrate the wave nature of light. Interference will be discussed now. Interference occurs when two or more light waves overlap, either constructively, increased amplitude, or destructively, decreased amplitude, depending on their phase relationship. Examples include Young's double-slit experiment and thin film interference. Diffraction will be discussed now. Diffraction refers to the bending of light waves around obstacles or through openings. It leads to the spreading of light and can be observed in various phenomena, such as the spreading of light through a narrow slit or around edges. Let's talk about polarization. Polarization of light will be discussed now. Polarization refers to the orientation of the electric field vector of light waves. Polarizing filters can selectively block light waves oriented in specific directions, useful in applications like sunglasses, LCD displays, and optical microscopy. Let's talk about optical phenomena dispersion will be discussed now. Dispersion is the separation of light into its component colors wavelengths, by refraction or diffraction. It explains phenomena like rainbows, where water droplets disperse sunlight into its spectrum of colors. Scattering will be discussed now. Scattering occurs when light interacts with small particles or irregularities in a medium, causing it to change direction. This phenomenon contributes to the blue color of the sky and the appearance of clouds. Let's talk about applications. Fiber optics will be discussed now. Fiber optics use thin, flexible fibers of glass or plastic to transmit light signals over long distances with minimal loss. They are essential for telecommunications, internet connectivity, and medical imaging. Lasers will be discussed now. Lasers, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, emit coherent and focused beams of light. They have diverse applications in surgery, industry, cutting and welding, communication, and research. Holography will be discussed now. Holography uses interference patterns to record and reconstruct three-dimensional images. It is used in security features, art, and advanced imaging techniques. Optical coherence tomography, OCT, will be discussed now. OCT is a medical imaging technique that uses light waves to capture cross-sectional images of tissues. It is widely used in ophthalmology and cardiology for diagnosis and monitoring. 
Let's talk about emerging technologies. Metamaterials will be discussed now. Metamaterials are engineered materials with properties not found in nature. They can manipulate light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation in ways that conventional materials cannot, leading to advances in optics and beyond. Quantum optics will be discussed now. Quantum optics explores the interaction between light and matter at the quantum level. It is essential for developing technologies such as quantum computing, quantum cryptography, and precise measurement techniques. Let's talk about conclusion. Optics is a diverse and dynamic field that encompasses both the classical wave behavior and quantum nature of light. Its applications span from fundamental research to everyday technologies, contributing to advancements in communication, imaging, and scientific discovery. Let's talk about introduction waves and optics explore the behavior of waves and the properties of light. Understanding waves, their interactions, and the nature of light helps us explain many natural phenomena and develop technologies such as cameras, telescopes, and lasers. This chapter covers the fundamental principles, properties, and applications of waves and optics. Let's talk about waves. Types of waves will be discussed now. Waves are disturbances that transfer energy from one point to another. There are two main types of waves. Mechanical waves will be discussed now. Require a medium to travel through, such as sound waves in air or water waves in the ocean. Electromagnetic waves will be discussed now. Do not require a medium and can travel through a vacuum, such as light waves and radio waves. Wave properties will be discussed now. Key properties of waves include Wavelength will be discussed now. The distance between two consecutive points in phase, such as crest to crest or trough to trough. Frequency will be discussed now. The number of wave cycles that pass a given point per unit time. Amplitude will be discussed now. The maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. Speed will be discussed now. The rate at which the wave propagates through a medium. Wave equation will be discussed now. The wave equation relates the speed of a wave to its frequency and wavelength. The relationship can be found in the accompanying materials. Wave interference will be discussed now. When two or more waves meet, they interfere with each other. This can be constructive interference, where the waves add together to form a larger amplitude, or destructive interference, where they cancel each other out. Standing waves will be discussed now. Standing waves are formed by the interference of two waves traveling in opposite directions. They appear to be stationary and are characterized by nodes, points of zero displacement, and antinodes, points of maximum displacement. Doppler effect will be discussed now. The Doppler effect is the change in frequency, or wavelength of a wave in relation to an observer moving relative to the wave source. This effect explains why the pitch of a siren changes as an ambulance passes by. Let's talk about optics. Nature of light will be discussed now. Light exhibits both wave-like and particle-like properties, a concept known as wave-particle duality. Light waves are electromagnetic waves that can travel through a vacuum. Reflection and refraction will be discussed now. Reflection will be discussed now. The bouncing back of light waves when they hit a surface. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Refraction will be discussed now. The bending of light as it passes from one medium to another with different densities. The change in speed causes the light to change direction. Snell's law will be discussed now. Snell's law describes the relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction and the indices of refraction of the two media. The formula can be found in the accompanying materials. Lenses and mirrors will be discussed now. Convex and concave mirrors will be discussed now. Reflect light to form images. Convex mirrors diverge light rays, while concave mirrors converge them. Convex and concave lenses will be discussed now. Refract light to form images. Convex lenses converge light rays, while concave lenses diverge them. Optical instruments will be discussed now. Instruments such as microscopes, telescopes, 
and cameras use lenses and mirrors to magnify, focus, and capture images. Understanding the principles of optics is essential for designing and using these tools effectively. Interference and diffraction will be discussed now. Interference will be discussed now. Light waves can interfere constructively or destructively, leading to patterns of bright and dark fringes. Diffraction will be discussed now. The bending of light around obstacles or through narrow openings, resulting in spreading and interference patterns. Polarization will be discussed now. Polarization refers to the orientation of light waves oscillations. Polarized light has waves oscillating in one direction, which can be achieved using polarizing filters. Let's talk about applications. Fiber optics will be discussed now. Fiber optics use light to transmit data over long distances with minimal loss. They are the backbone of modern communication networks, including the Internet. Lasers will be discussed now. Lasers produce coherent, monochromatic light through stimulated emission. They have numerous applications, including in medicine, communications, and manufacturing. Holography will be discussed now. Holography involves recording and reconstructing light waves to create three-dimensional images. It has applications in data storage, security, and imaging. Astronomy will be discussed now. Telescopes use optical principles to observe distant celestial objects. Advances in optics have led to the discovery of new planets, galaxies, and deeper understanding of the universe. Let's talk about conclusion. Waves and optics provide a framework for understanding the behavior of waves and the nature of light. These principles are essential for exploring natural phenomena and developing technologies that enhance our daily lives and expand our scientific horizons. Let's move to next chapter. Modern physics let's talk about introduction. Modern physics explores the fundamental principles and phenomena that govern the behavior of matter and energy at the smallest and largest scales. This chapter covers the key concepts of relativity, quantum mechanics, and particle physics, providing a comprehensive understanding of the advanced topics that shape our current view of the universe. Let's talk about special relativity. Principle of relativity will be discussed now. Special relativity, developed by Albert Einstein, is based on two postulates. 1. The laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. Two. The speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, regardless of their motion relative to the light source. Time dilation will be discussed now. Time dilation is a consequence of special relativity, where time appears to pass more slowly for an object in motion relative to a stationary observer. This effect becomes significant at speeds close to the speed of light. Length contraction will be discussed now. Length contraction states that an object in motion will appear shorter along the direction of its motion to a stationary observer. Like time dilation, this effect is noticeable at relativistic speeds. Mass-energy equivalence will be discussed now. The famous equation backslash equals mc caret 2 backslash expresses the equivalence of mass and energy, indicating that mass can be converted into energy and vice versa. This principle is fundamental to nuclear reactions and particle physics. Let's talk about general relativity. Curvature of spacetime will be discussed now. General relativity extends the principles of special relativity to include gravity, describing it as the curvature of spacetime caused by mass and energy. Massive objects, like planets and stars, cause spacetime to curve, and this curvature affects the motion of objects and the propagation of light. Gravitational time dilation will be discussed now. In general relativity, time passes more slowly in stronger gravitational fields. This effect has been confirmed through experiments, such as the observation of time differences between clocks on Earth and satellites in orbit. Black holes will be discussed now. Black holes are regions of spacetime with gravitational fields so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape from them. They are predicted by general relativity and have been observed indirectly through their effects on nearby matter and light. Let's talk about quantum mechanics. Wave-particle duality will be discussed now. 
quantum mechanics reveals that particles, such as electrons and photons, exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties. This duality is a fundamental aspect of the behavior of matter and energy at the smallest scales. Uncertainty principle will be discussed now. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that it is impossible to simultaneously know the exact position and momentum of a particle. This intrinsic uncertainty limits the precision of measurements and has profound implications for our understanding of the microscopic world. Quantum states and superposition will be discussed now. Quantum states describe the probabilities of finding particles in various positions and states. Superposition allows particles to exist in multiple states simultaneously until measured, leading to phenomena like interference and entanglement. Quantum entanglement will be discussed now. Entangled particles remain connected such that the state of one particle instantaneously affects the state of another, regardless of the distance between them. This non-local property challenges classical notions of causality and locality. Let's talk about particle physics. Fundamental particles will be discussed now. The standard model of particle physics categorizes all known fundamental particles into two groups, fermions and bosons. Fermions, such as quarks and leptons, make up matter, while bosons, like photons and gluons, mediate forces. Forces and interactions will be discussed now. For fundamental forces govern the interactions between particles. 1. Gravitational force will be discussed now. Weakest but acts over long distances, affecting all particles with mass. 2. Electromagnetic force will be discussed now. Acts between charged particles and is responsible for electric and magnetic phenomena. 3. Weak nuclear force will be discussed now. Responsible for processes like beta decay, affecting subatomic particles. 4. Strong nuclear force will be discussed now. Strongest force, binding quarks together to form protons, neutrons, and atomic nuclei. Particle accelerators will be discussed now. Particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, accelerate particles to high speeds and collide them to study fundamental interactions and discover new particles. These experiments have confirmed predictions of the standard model and led to the discovery of the Higgs boson. Let's talk about applications and implications quantum computing will be discussed now. Quantum computing leverages the principles of superposition and entanglement to perform computations more efficiently than classical computers for certain tasks. This emerging technology has the potential to revolutionize fields such as cryptography, optimization, and materials science. Medical imaging will be discussed now. Techniques like MRI and PET scans rely on principles of quantum mechanics and particle physics to provide detailed images of the body's internal structures, aiding in diagnosis and treatment. Cosmology will be discussed now. Modern physics provides insights into the origin, evolution, and fate of the universe. The study of cosmic microwave background radiation, dark matter, and dark energy are key areas of research that seek to answer fundamental questions about the cosmos. Let's talk about conclusion. Modern physics offers a deeper understanding of the fundamental principles governing the universe, from the behavior of subatomic particles to the dynamics of cosmic structures. These advanced topics not only expand our knowledge, but also drive technological innovations that impact our daily lives and our future. Let's move to next chapter. Atomic and nuclear physics Let's talk about introduction Atomic and nuclear physics explore the properties and behavior of atoms and their nuclei. These fields provide a deep understanding of the fundamental building blocks of matter, nuclear reactions, and their applications in energy, medicine, and technology. This chapter covers the key concepts, phenomena, and applications of atomic and nuclear physics. Let's talk about atomic physics. Structure of the atom will be discussed now. Atoms consist of a nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons, surrounded by electrons in various energy levels or orbitals. The arrangement of electrons determines the chemical properties of an element. Quantum model of the atom will be discussed now. 
The quantum model describes the behavior of electrons and atoms using principles of quantum mechanics. Electrons occupy discrete energy levels, and their positions are described by probability distributions rather than fixed orbits. Atomic spectra will be discussed now. When electrons transition between energy levels, they absorb or emit photons of specific wavelengths, producing characteristic atomic spectra. These spectra are unique to each element and are used in spectroscopy to identify substances. Electron configurations will be discussed now. The arrangement of electrons in an atom's orbitals follows the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule, leading to specific electron configurations. These configurations explain the periodic table's structure and the chemical behavior of elements. Let's talk about nuclear physics. Nuclear structure will be discussed now. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons, collectively known as nucleons. The strong nuclear force binds nucleons together, overcoming the electrostatic repulsion between protons. Nuclear reactions will be discussed now. Nuclear reactions involve changes in an atom's nucleus and can release or absorb significant amounts of energy. Types of nuclear reactions include Radioactive decay will be discussed now. Unstable nuclei spontaneously emit particles or radiation to become more stable. Types of decay include alpha, beta, and gamma decay. Fission will be discussed now. A heavy nucleus splits into smaller nuclei, releasing energy. This process powers nuclear reactors and atomic bombs. Fusion will be discussed now. Light nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus, releasing energy. Fusion powers stars, including the sun, and holds potential for future energy production on Earth. Binding energy and stability will be discussed now. The binding energy of a nucleus is the energy required to disassemble it into its constituent protons and neutrons. Higher binding energy indicates greater nuclear stability. The most stable nuclei have intermediate masses, explaining the energy release in fission and fusion. Let's talk about applications. Nuclear energy will be discussed now. Nuclear reactors use controlled fission reactions to generate electricity. While providing a significant energy source, nuclear power poses challenges, such as radioactive waste management and the risk of accidents. Medical applications will be discussed now. Nuclear physics has numerous medical applications, including Radiation therapy will be discussed now. Uses ionizing radiation to treat cancer by damaging the DNA of cancer cells. Medical imaging will be discussed now. Techniques like PET scans and gamma cameras use radioactive tracers to diagnose and monitor diseases. Nuclear weapons will be discussed now. Nuclear weapons release massive amounts of energy through fission or fusion reactions. Their development and proliferation have significant political and ethical implications due to their destructive potential. Radiocarbon dating will be discussed now. Radiocarbon dating uses the decay of carbon-14 to determine the age of archaeological and geological samples. This method provides valuable insights into the history of life and human civilization. Particle physics experiments will be discussed now. Particle accelerators and detectors are used to study the properties of subatomic particles and nuclear reactions. These experiments help us understand fundamental forces and the origins of the universe. Let's talk about modern developments. Nuclear fusion research will be discussed now. Efforts to develop practical nuclear fusion reactors aim to provide a virtually limitless and clean energy source. Experimental reactors like ITER, International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, are exploring the feasibility of sustained fusion reactions. Advancements in imaging will be discussed now. Advances in nuclear imaging techniques improve the accuracy and effectiveness of medical diagnostics and treatment. Innovations include more precise imaging agents and hybrid imaging systems combining multiple modalities. Nuclear waste management will be discussed now. Developing safe and effective methods for managing nuclear waste is a critical area of research. Solutions include long-term storage, reprocessing, 
and transmutation of radioactive materials. Let's talk about conclusion. Atomic and nuclear physics provide a foundational understanding of the smallest constituents of matter and the forces that govern their interactions. These fields have profound implications for energy production, medical technology, and our knowledge of the universe. Continued research and development in atomic and nuclear physics promise to drive future technological and scientific advancements.